Wisconsin Eye is at the Eau Claire Public Library. We're interviewing candidates. The special election in Senate District Number 10. State Representative Shannon Zimmerman now represents District 30, and he's a Republican candidate in the December 19th primary. Representative, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're finishing your first term. I am. Where did you make a mark in the legislative process or the budget in your first years in office? Wow. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit three primary areas uh, because I think that, and, and they're a little bit different in terms of the, the focus and the emphasis. You know, first of all, I think it's understood that as a freshman, you truly are a freshman. There's so much to learn. And, you know, while I have an extensive business background and dealt with a lot of complexities, you know, government and, and the procedures and processes were something that you have to just come up to speed on. But a key area of focus for mine was related to much of the governor's budget. And so in various committees, in various ways, I was very supportive of some of the things I saw. I saw them as, as, as hugely beneficial to uh, my district, to Western Wisconsin. Uh, record investments in education. Uh, this is uh, directly tied to the future of our workforce. So I was proud to be a part of that process in helping to move that. You know, uh, collaborating on some of the tax reductions and, and that, that we saw in this past budget. Also exceptional moves uh, certainly by the legislator during this last session. Next, I was uh, a, a member of the Jobs and Economy uh, Committee and was deeply involved in the Foxconn um, um, opportunity for the state of Wisconsin. Now, you know, for those who don't know, um, having the business background, I once upon a time, actually in the early years of our business, was on a much smaller scale in a similar situation. Working with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, you know, our business in River Falls had gotten to the point where we needed to build a 25,000 square foot office facility. And we're in a border district. And logically, we were being courted by Minnesota communities to build our business there. And it was the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation that came through and they said, look, we'll provide you uh, with some tax credits. You have to earn them. Well, how do you earn them? Go create 30 jobs. Well, we created 130. Uh, and so I used those experiences and I, I'm proud to be a part of that process. Foxconn will certainly have a profound impact on southeastern Wisconsin, but make no mistake, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. The broader reaches of this state will feel the positive effects of this. Third and finally, I was proud to support something that I'm also passionate about. We have an opiate epidemic in this state. We are seeing it firsthand in the Western District both in the uh, larger population centers, but also in the rural areas. I personally, we've had members of our company that have lost family members, lost them to this. And so while you know maybe we didn't move heaven and earth in, in the whole package of bills, we took steps. And I'll continue to make that fight a priority of mine as we go forward. So those are just a handful of some of the things that I'm proud of. You say on your Facebook that you've been a witness to the opioid epidemic. So this is a reference to some of your employees at family members? Both. Okay. Both. Uh, then what, if we haven't done enough, what are your ideas on next step to fight this epidemic? Boy. I have taken a lot of time. You know, we can we can trace OxyContin back to Purdue Pharmaceutical and look at maybe some of the mistakes and some of the, the falsifications that were made that led to this drug being released. Uh, we can look to insurance companies maybe who, uh, based on some of their influence, have, have maybe indirectly uh, almost promoted to some of the physicians to, to make you know, help pain go away, mm -hmm. don't, uh, don't have readmissions and so forth. Awareness and education. You know, things like Narcan, we, you know, the, the, these are things uh, that we passed in this last budget and a number of other bills that we had passed. And, and those are reactive measures. They can save a life. In fact, after passing the bill, Hudson Police Chief Marty Jensen told me within one week of, of arming his, team, uh, his officers with Narcan, they had a save. That's wonderful. But what if we could prevent it before it ever had to get there? And I think that's going to come by way of education, uh, awareness. We need to get everybody involved. The, the, the pharmaceutical makers, the insurance companies, the healthcare providers. I believe everybody wants to do the right thing here, but we have to be doing things that, that truly take these drugs away from those who abuse it. I wanna make sure I stress that. There are legitimately people who need these, these medications, and I'm not suggesting that we banish them. What I'm saying is that we have to save people from the effects of these, and that's my point. I've been witness, I've seen it in my family, heartbreakingly so, and I've seen it twice now inside my company, and no heart breaks more when you learn that a young individual is lost because they couldn't break the addiction. Counties are suing Big Pharma, do you support that? 
it all comes back, you know, we, we live in a litigious society today, and in general, I'm not a big fan of litigation because I think sometimes uh, um, it, it, it's um, erroneous. I think it's, it's fabricated, and so I'm never going to be a, a, in general a proponent of litigation. I think we spend way too much money on that. That said, if we can raise the issue, because people respond to pain or pleasure, and if Big Pharma maybe starts to feel that, hey, we got to do something a little bit different here, and if that litigation helps them think differently and maybe make some changes, I could conceive of maybe getting behind it. But in general, I'm not going to be a big fan of litigation because what it does is it spends a lot of money, um, and we probably end up not getting the results that we want in the end. I think Big Pharma cares about this issue as well. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. So I understand capitalism. I, in fact, I celebrate free markets. I celebrate capitalism. But when capitalism gets in the way of, of human beings and, and our wellness, we as a body of people, a, a, as a state, have to stand up and say, hold on, <laughs> something else has to happen here. You were part of the um, debate over highway funding that stalled the state budget. Yeah. Well, going forward, how should we solve the, the, the highway funding dilemma, the, the, the break that gridlock? <sighs> The transportation issue has not gone away. We know it. You know it. Um, there were certainly some mild and modest steps taken in this past budget. Uh, we didn't, you know, do do great things. I'll say, if you will, the transportation budget is one part of a broader, obviously, budget. And so, when you move certain amounts of monies over to one area, you're taking them from somewhere. And so. Wisconsin, we need to think about overall revenues and how we continue to build on the great foundation. And I say that great foundation. The reforms, uh, uh, the work of our good governor, of the legislator, legislature that has gone before me, we've established a great foundation. Look around. I mean, unemployment is at near zero, certainly in, in the Western District, which is fantastic. Uh, jobs are abundant, but, but workforce issues are, are prevalent. So we have to find ways to increase revenue. Back to transportation here. We have to find a sustainable method to do this. I think that what we do is have, we have to balance it with our other spending areas, but if we're able to actually flourish economically as a state, that's going to help that, that issue. I would also add very specifically, because this was socialized, I want to make sure that people certainly in my district know when the topic of, of tolls as, a, as, a, as an option gets socialized, I'm adamantly against it. Okay. And, and I just, we have too many people who commute over into this large metropolitan in the Twin Cities uh, for their employment. Now, I'm, I'm gonna work to change that because I want more of those jobs in our state, certainly, but I will not do that. What I feel is this, we need to exhaust all measures to resolve this transportation issue. But if we get to the very end and we have to uh, increase the gas tax, let's not be cutesy about it, let's just do it. Let's be transparent and honest with people and say, look, we need a few extra dollars here to take care of this. We've exhausted all other areas. We audited the DOT and we buttoned them up. Everything's nice and tight there. This is what we have to do. Okay. You've been a part of the deliberations over the dark store phenomena where judges have. are saying that empty major retailers can have the same assessed values as open ones. Mm -hmm. Do you support the bill offer offered by Representative Brooks, the, the, those two bills? I do. I, I, am in support, I am in support of that, uh, that bill. Is uh, that a tax-based issue for local government? It uh, absolutely is. And, and you know, what, what I, I, I like to represent myself as certainly an advocate and, and a defender for the taxpayer. And, and you know, I am pro-business, so I, I don't want to take away from that. But the reality is that when, when you have a loophole in place, and that's really how I view it, um, that can adversely affect the local taxpayer and the local resident, no, we have to fix that. And so I am in support of that bill. The pending bills, uh, there's two of them, but one of them would ban fetal uh, research on fetal tissue from elective abortions. Mm -hmm. Support that? Uh, first of all, I, I believe in life. I am a huge proponent of life. And, and um, well, as you, if you know, I mean, uh, I was a... I was a young father. <laughs> you shared that on your Facebook I website. I did. You know, because I... I um, you were faced with the prospect of being a father at age 17. I was, um, from a little rural town in Wisconsin. And I, I didn't want to hide that fact. I didn't want people to think that it was something I was concealing. Um, I look back, and I'm proud of that. And, 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 and my wife will be married 28 years in, in June. Um, couldn't be more in love with my wife. Uh, and I'm so glad we did that because I've got four little grandchildren now that, um, that I spend all my time with as a result of that decision. Back to your question. I cannot come to grips with um, any benefit, financial or otherwise, that is derived from the willful, deliberate termination of life. 
And so when you ask me about bills that relate, and I know there's a couple bills here that, you, that yeah. maybe you're referring to, um, I'm going to lean more towards the fact that, look, if it was willful, and deliberate to terminate the life, then I, nobody should benefit from that. And so that's the position I'm going to take. Um, if, as is the, is the case in, in, in all other areas of medicine, if, if we decide as donors uh, or, or it was not a willful act, that's a very, very different story then. Uh, I'm surprised recently a bill has popped up that would lower the drinking age if we don't lose 53 million in highway funds. What's your position on that? Boy, the old phrase, slippery slope, comes into play, right? So by, in, in, in full disclosure, um, uh, my family, uh, my wife and I, uh, my oldest son and his wife, we are uh, co-owners in a winery in River Falls. So I'm in the, indus the alcohol industry, nice. and so I want to make sure that, that I'm, I'm transparent about that. You know, um, this is a tough one because I talked, in fact, last night I was meeting with the chief of police in River Falls. This very subject came up and he said, you know, we're strongly against it. And, and I said, why? And, and his answer was, this is a university town. The number one issue they deal with is excessive drinking. And so his, his point was, you know, if you lower that, you're going to only perpetuate the issue. That's a valid point. Now, on the flip side, I also honor, for example, and this is the, the example that's always used, but it's true. How do we possibly look at our young men and women who are willing to put their life on the line for our country and say, yeah, you can go die for us, but you can't you know, enjoy a beer you know, with your dad or your buddies or your, your family, right? So um, this is a, a subject that I, I uh, am open to. I want to learn more about it, uh, but there are some concerns and reservations that I have, but I also understand that, look, when you can do some of these other things for our great nation and our great state, you know, you should be able to have a beer as well. I've always been struck that the 10th Senate District is the only one that includes two four-year universities, River That's Falls right. and Stout. Yeah. So as we debate how much state aid is available for all of higher education, what is going to be your role, what would be your role representing two four years yep. as, as we sort through this funding, yeah. funding question? Yeah. So first of all, you know, the, the topic of educational funding is one that continues to reoccur. And I am a huge proponent of, of strategic investment in education, K-12 and higher education. We need to put more bright uh, Wisconsin uh, kids, students, graduates into our workforce, and we need to keep them here. So a few things. First, let's rethink the paradigm a little bit here. If you investigate and you really understand some of the rules that, that uh, bind our, our higher education system, some of them, I think all obvious, uh, we would look at and go, why? why? Why are we doing it this way? Why, why can't they, they get more uh, integrated with private sector business? Why can't private sector business find new ways to fund, help fund some of this stuff? Look, um, those who teach our children, those who are, are, are teaching the next generation of workforce, they're to be celebrated, all right? And so I'm not, I'm not looking to, to make cuts at their expense. What I'm looking to do is say, there's a better way to do this, and I'm going to advocate for that. I, in fact, in my first term, working with Representative Dave Murphy uh, in the Assembly, uh, who is the chair of, of, of that committee, we talked a lot about this. We believe that there's better ways, and working with folks like Ray Cross, we're going to find them. And that's a big reason that I, I opted to run for this seat. Um, my belief is from a Senate seat, you know, your, your sphere of influence may be a bit greater. The ability to accomplish more may, may be a bit greater. And that's what I want to do, because I don't want to make this a lifelong proposition. I want to support our education because it supports our workforce, and economic development and betterment is hugely important to me. Let's go back to Foxconn and, work, and workforce development. If Foxconn hires within five years, 3,000 people, and yep. 10 years, 13,000, yeah. as somebody who's hired people, you see all the now hiring. Yeah. Are there going to be qualified workers if Foxconn hits those maximum numbers? Yeah. First of all, I, my, my answer is I believe to be yes, and here's why. But this is another reason that, that you know, when I decided to run for this seat, I'm not running against my, my colleague, all right? I'm running because I believe I'm the right person, and I believe my background aligns to what we're, the challenge is. And, and by the way, they're high-class challenges, right? You know, having a lot of jobs is a great thing, but it still is a challenge. We need to be creative. We need Wisconsin to be the destination state for workforce in the upper Midwest. If you look at Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, and Michigan, and Wisconsin, and you look at our demographics, we're strikingly similar. We're an aging population. These people are getting to retirement, and they've earned it. But we also need to make sure that we're replenishing our workforce. Well, there's a couple ways I believe you can do that. My ideas are this. Number one, 
let's materially attack our income tax. Let's, let's reduce our income tax so that uh, retirees aren't vacating our state because we've taxed them out of here. Number two, that we're going to hold our graduates. Why? Because more of their money is theirs. Number three, entrepreneurs, startups, and existing businesses looking to deploy will come to Wisconsin. That effect, my, my experience tells me, that effect will create a, a surge of people who will want to work in the state of Wisconsin, and that's one way that we address the Foxconn opportunity. You just talked about changes to our tax structure. Are you talking about both the corporate and the personal income tax? I would. I think all are on the table. Number one, you know, we see what's happening at the federal level. I do think at the national level we have to be more competitive with corporate tax. Uh, that's going to stop the the, the 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 companies leaving. But I also think in the state within the state, it is time. If ever there was a time to look at our income tax, it's right now. I mean, we're in a good state right now. We're in, we're in good financial condition. And I would, I would appeal to our governor uh, to say, look, help me be, let me be a part of this. I will champion some of this. But if we look at the income tax uh, and look at either, either uh, a material reduction or flat tax, or uh, let's explore even elimination here, um, that is a possibility and that will have a profound effect. And, and, and the reason I say that is, Let's not just look at this short window of time. Let's look down the road 10, 20, and 30 years and build on this foundation and make it sure it's sustainable those many years out. Um, two final questions. We've got a couple of minutes left. Yep. The Senate District 10 always intrigues me because it is booming uh, mm -hmm. with uh, across the river from Minnesota and yes. those commuters going both ways. Mm -hmm. Biggest need of Senate District 10? Senate District 10 is a diverse district, okay, because the, the, the conditions and the profile you, you just described would be that, that far western perimeter. But you also have to understand- the Hudson area. That's right. We're balancing that with some very rural areas where you know, the needs are very different. I believe my background also aligns me well to that. I grew up in a small town where you have one major employer, and if they're thriving, so is the community. And if they're not, the community's suffering. So that's a very, very different profile you need someone who understands both. So. I think it, it, it continues to revolve around economic betterment. And I'm gonna say use those two words because when people are working and they have good, uh, good paying jobs, families are provided for and life is good. Everything benefits thereafter. So in Hudson, we have a set of challenges and opportunities to bring more of the high-end businesses there, keep them on our side of the river so more residents stay there, they fill those jobs. In more of the rural areas, let's start to develop programs where we're helping to foster new startups, uh, new, uh, existing companies that will choose to deploy in those areas so that we create multiple uh, employers so they're not reliant solely on just one. Then final question, do you want to highlight differences between you and your opponent in the December 19 primary? I would never highlight differences in an adverse or, or, or negative way. So I'm simply going to say this. You know, if you've not gleaned from me, I am a pro-business guy. I'm a common sense outsider. I'm probably the least political person in Madison, and I want to keep it that way. I want to execute and do a good job for, the, for my, my kids and my grandkids who live in the 10th Senate District, my friends, my neighbors, the people who helped my company grow and took my dream and made it theirs. So I believe what separates me uh, is that business background, that common sense uh, approach to help bring results to the state of Wisconsin. Thank you. State Representative Shannon Zimmerman of River Falls is now, now represents District 30 in the Assembly, but he's one of two candidates in the December 19th primary in the 10th Senate District. Shannon, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much. Thank you.